what's going on guys welcome back to day 12 of our threat hunting episode and we are going to pick up from exactly the same thing that we have left last time in our day 11 of threat hunt process execution hunt okay and this time we are going to show you from the real life snapshot of splunk the way i have shown you in the last episode the example of the queries this time we are going to run it okay so let me take you to my console over here um what is exactly happening over here so the the logs um the data set the type of queries will be the same that we have ran last time but this time we have got some actual examples and actual outcome so that i can show you how basically using those commands that we have uh, seen in our last episode in day 11th how our hunt can be done okay so the very first thing that we are going to do over here so again uh, windows event log um, and event code 4688 so which is nothing but a new process creation and if you are going to run the same thing with your sysmon data so obviously it will be event id 1 okay and we are going to hunt for powershell so process name is anything about powershell and we are starting the data with the process name process command line okay so once we are doing this kind of search these are the results that is getting popped up from our um, uh, dummy data that we have uh, covering okay so now if we see the data from this kind of fashion so the data which are coming at the very top these data are looking quite uh, obvious and quite legitimate because these are getting some of the gettings run by Splunk. They are some of the things are getting um, by teams, installing some command, Vima, PS, stuff like that. And now while you are doing baselining of your data, you need to very well understand which are okay to um, bypass and which data is suspicious for you to take your pivot point and start your analysis from that point of time. Okay. So now um, while you are doing the baselining of your data, you need to do a interaction with your um, peers, with your engineers who are actually working on those kind of data so that you get the actual log out of it. Okay. So now if we see, so these are the data which are normalized for us and which are okay to be frank at this point of time. Now, if we go just uh, for the next set of uh, results and if we see what exactly the data that is coming up in here in this section so if we just see this particular data over here so this data we are seeing just below the normal one okay so if we just, if i just go back here again so if you see the bottom section over here so there are some no profile execution that is happening so we are going to focus on this portion of data right now so if i go to the next slide and if i go if i want to show you the exact data that we have seen at the body bottom so now this data is looking somehow suspicious but we are not sure until unless we know what is inside this encoded string or what is inside this encoded data format right so now one thing is very sure that the powershell is being run with no profile that is very uh, common that we see for any kind of uh, local script which are authorized that is one symbol for it and execution policy bypass that means this thing also we have seen until unless uh, uh, we see there is something else also is going on that could be something malicious like right? we will see that in a second what do i mean by that but execution policy bypass also we have seen in many of the legitimate codes okay now what is the main thing that we need to do we just need to decode this base 64 encoded string that we are observing over here and over there okay so how we can do that so it's pretty simple at this point of time so what we need to do we just need to dump this data um, uh, just copy the data actually copy the data and open shivershape and shivershape will give you the exact result okay so this is the thing that we are seeing just now so after dumping the whole data the whole base 64 data from here what we are seeing over here we are seeing uh, some output which makes sense but it is again some there are some null bytes also present which are in form of like dot colon and something like that so cyberchef also gives you the option by which you can remove those things so it's just a 
point of click uh, format and after once you remove those things you will get this clean data out of uh, uh, that encoded string okay so now after seeing this data it is also looking somehow clean into my eyes um, uh, it is because it's a splunk agent which is running um, and this data and uh, this basically uh, this script looks legitimate so I don't see anything suspicious just by looking at the front page of this particular data okay so um, so what we can do just by now seeing because we have just exported and we have recorded one set of base 64 coding right now if we want to do multiple so we can definitely uh, create a small script and in uh, uh, decode all of the data but that is not the thing that we do in threat hunt but we try to identify the outliner okay so what do i mean by the outliner so outliner is the thing there should be some kind of anomaly in the number or in the uh, in terms of originating the data format okay so originating in the data format as in how many times that particular string or that particular event we are seeing in our data set that we call as um, the common data set okay and if we see something some pattern of our data which is very unregular or very irregular in our data set we call is that uh, irregular or um, outliner okay so now if i go back and if i show you the next screen so you will see that the event count here are quietly matching with the data format that we have just decoded okay so 191 189 184 and 180 so now just by looking at this number of counts for a particular day it gives me a hint that okay so the first thing i have identified my decoded data is somehow okay now i am seeing these similar kind of formats with the same kind of string same kinds of pattern that is going on which are quite recurring in my environment in a particular day right so that is something not to be considered as outliner okay rather what we can do we can go to the next one and we can try to identify what else we have in our data now notice this data set okay so now this data set is looking somehow already malicious because if you see here there are some other patterns are also going on okay so there are no interaction string over here there is hidden string over here so that means the way this powershell is getting run so user will not have any clue that there is a powershell command and powershell script is being run at the back end and there is a script blocks that is getting executed and new object is getting created and in the new object compression technique there is a zzip compression techniques is also getting introduced now if you have um, seen my decompress techniques on powershell decompress and uh, shellcode decompress i will leave the link in the description please watch them so i have told multiple times if you see in your logs there is gun zip and with powershell so we already think that there could be something malicious going on on the data okay so now what we will do we will simply try to decompress this particular uh, uh, data stream that we have seeing after all of those patterns if we see there is something malicious obviously our hunt will be successful right so in the next step what we will do if i go to the next slide what i have done so this is the basic uh, script that i have seen right so script block which is getting executed and new object is getting created which is basically a input I, uh, input output io stream basically getting created after the gun zip new object again being created with the memory stream allocation and there is a form base 64 encoding so these thing are very important for us okay so i have just uh, uh, cut out this um, the full script just to give you uh, the full overview in a single page but you can see the whole input over here right so this is the starting of the input and this is the ending of the input so this is the specifically the whole input that i was talking about okay and <coughs> and after after the decode gets done it is very important for us to identify what is going on okay so that is the reason we will again use a uh, uh, 
cyber shape and this is the input of the cyber shape and after parsing the cyber shape through the base 64 encoding and the gun zip uh, decompressed technique we are getting this data out of our uh, whole foot right so now pay attention to this very uh, very closely now this particular thing is quite spooky for us now if you if you want to uh, you can say that hey why this is important and why this is as looks suspicious to you because if you see here there is a get type which is getting invoked and the microsoft windows 32 bit extension file is getting invoked over here okay now there is a return object which is also getting used and it is getting tried to the process address which is getting allocated to its memory right so this file and this function is a suspicious one now how can i get the low hanging fruits out of this uh, full function so if you remember there is a tool called sc debug okay so uh, people call it sgb debug sc debug and stuff like that so what i did after i get this particular output i save it in a file and i ran the sg debug out, uh, from uh, sg debug onto that output file just to identify what are the low hanging fruit in terms of ip addresses domain name and all those information i can capture and just see the magic guys so i'll just show you the output okay so now here is the interesting part guys so what exactly i am seeing over here i have just pasted the file that i have observed and i have downloaded uh, from my um from the previous analysis and i have just passed it with the sbg sc debug okay so now if you see the same file and it is getting me the connection of the socket stream okay so the host is getting connected on this particular ip address on this particular port number okay so now you can tell me hey this is a local ip address doesn't make any sense but yes i agree this is a local ip address but this is a dummy data right but in your actual real life scenario what you will do you will after getting the raw packet after decoding the file from your base 64 and after decompression from gun zip if you pass the data in your sg debug and sc debug you will see that this octet stream is going obviously somewhere creating a ws socket and getting a connection request to an host which is your attacker host name okay which would be your attacker ip address because in a real life scenario you won't see very much uh, or very um, common scenarios you can identify where powershell is creating a socket which is going outside from your network and creating a network packet for you okay so this is quite suspicious so this is the way that we have hunt the uh, process creation which was again the powershell process creation and we have identified what is going on inside that particular uh, point of time okay so that's pretty much it from today's episode it was a quite short but but very crisp one where i just wanted to show you how you can utilize those um techniques that i have shown you in day 11 and you can convert them into a real hunting scenario and try to formulate your hypothesis and hunt just simple simple hypothesis process creation maybe powershell process creation maybe bash process creation maybe something else also depending upon the risk of your infrastructure but if you definitely try to hunt after baselining your data on process creation definitely you're gonna find something so that's the whole motive of today's episode so i hope you have enjoyed the session if so please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe black pearl so that you can get all those notifications coming to your way i'll catch you guys next time stay healthy stay safe